From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. Right up front on this very special program, I want to wish all of you a happy, joyful, and blessed Christmas. The holidays should be all about that, putting Christ back into Christmas. We're going to be talking about this in the first thing on our list here today, as far as a headline, for many, Jesus isn't the reason for the season. And let's put Christ mass in its place. And uh, this one's all important. Who is Jesus? So many came, knew him in his lifetime. Did they really know him? Who is Jesus? Jack, you're going to be answering this all-important question for us today. It was November 26th at 5 a.m. And the Holy Spirit awakened me, and I have 15,000 verses memorized, and I can shoot all over like a computer. And the Spirit of God showed me what I was to preach for the Christmas message. And I rushed to my desk and put down the outline, and then spent many hours putting it together. Every verse must fit. I'm going to show you the Trinity in the Old Testament. Oh, if only the rabbis of Israel could see this. It's so plain. And I'll tell you, when we get through, you're going to know who the true Jesus is. He's not one that came to find a wife. And Rexella, I'm just excited to get into this message. We know many things that happened on that holy night. The first thing I always think about is that star, the star in the sky over Bethlehem, of course. And who saw it? Oh, the shepherds. And they came running to see what this was all about. And there they are, Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus, God in the flesh. Going on, somebody else saw the star way far away. And of course it is the three wise men. Now I would like for you to see something that was sent that they brought. Mr. and Mrs. Painter Robert and Janet from Oklahoma sent me this. First time I ever saw it in my whole life, the reality, gold, frankincense and myrrh. Thank you so much for this beautiful gift. And this is the gift that the wise men brought to Jesus. They came from a great, great distance to see our Lord. And of course, going on, Christians celebrate the birth of Jesus, our Savior. But I'm sorry to say for many, Jesus isn't the reason for the season. Oh my, they're just shopping, having fun. All right, let's put Christ mass in its place. You see that on the left, Jesus day on the right, X mass, are you kidding? We don't need two uh, names for Christmas. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? When they saw him, did they know him? Did they know the message? And what is the message all about, friends? And now Jack is going to come right now to answer that all important question. Do you know who Jesus really was? Jack, answer the question, will you please? I'm going to hand this slowly and delicately because it's deep. The first verse of the Bible, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. His name is Yahweh, but in this text the Hebrew says, in the beginning, Elohim created. Why? Because whenever he works in unity with others, it becomes a plurality, a trinity, if you will. What? That's right. When we get to verse 26 of that first chapter, God speaks saying, let us make man in our image. Us and our happens to be much more than just one person, the Father. Well, was he speaking to the angels? No, the angels had no part in creation, Isaiah 45, 18. 
To whom was he speaking? His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come on. Here's the Trinity in the Old Testament. Oh, you rabbis ought to get into this like I have. Why? Proverbs 30, verse 4. Who hath established all the ends of the earth, created all this? What's God's name? What's his son's name? Old Testament, Rexella. The Holy Spirit. Psalm 104, verse 30. Listen carefully. God sent forth his Holy Spirit and he created and restored the face of the earth. So there is the Trinity way back at the very beginning. Now, all three of those were spirit beings. The Father was and is a spirit, John 4, 24. The Holy Spirit was and is a spirit. He's called the Holy Spirit, scores of times like Ephesians 4, 30. But Jesus was a spirit for he was in the form of God. But he took upon himself the form of a servant, flesh, to die on a cross. And only blood within that body could provide salvation. Christ was in the form of God. Yes, a spirit. So there are three spirits there. And one day the Trinity sat down and said, Adam is going to sin. For God is omniscient, knowing all things, and all three of them knew all things. Adam will fail after we have created him. And that's Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men for all sin through Adam's transgression. That's also Romans 5, 18 and 19. Now, what is the remedy? I'm really going to shock you. This plan that the three spirits planned for Christ to take a body and come was so they could become human and have blood. Why? Here's the Old Testament, Leviticus 17, 11. It's the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Hebrews 9, 22, New Testament, without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Oh, Rexella, this is exciting. This was all planned in eternity past that Jesus was going to come and do all these things. Yes. It's hard to believe. Now, if you accept this book, 1 Peter 1.20, Christ was foreordained, chosen before the foundation of the world to do what? Revelation 13.8, Christ is the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. When the world was created, it was all planned already. But now it had to occur. So Galatians 4.4 4 says, when the fullness of the time was come, the fullness of God's plan, God sent forth his son made of a woman, the precious Virgin Mary. Now let's consider this precious, holy, godly woman, the Virgin Mary. That's in the Old Testament. That's predicted. What? Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. That's exactly what happened in the New Testament in Matthew 1, 23. Only it adds, when he's called Emmanuel, that interpreted is God with us. Now Mary was shocked when the angel Gabriel came to her in Luke. Chapter 1, verse 28 through 35. And he says, Hail Mary, you're highly favored among women. God's chosen you. For what? To bring a son into the world. The son of God. Me? Yes. But she said, how shall this be? I know not a man. Verse 34. Gabriel said, the Holy Spirit shall go upon you. And that holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. This was not some sexual thing. This was a miracle work by that Holy Spirit who created in the Old Testament, created now this body. And that's why Jesus said in Hebrews 10, 5, a body, my Father, prepared me in the womb of this precious virgin. Oh, and this one was God, God from all eternity. Now, do you know that he was born in Bethlehem? That's Matthew 2, 1. Now, let's see that he existed from all eternity. 
Micah 5, 2. Thou Bethlehem, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet shall he, this Savior, come forth out of you, who was from old, from everlasting, Christ is the everlasting God, the second member of the Trinity. You can't get around it. Can I prove he's God from the Old Testament? Yes. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Oh, ho, ho, ho. here it is. Don't miss it. Unto us a child is born, virgin birth. Unto us a son is given. That's when he returns, and the government will be upon his shoulder. It's never been upon his shoulder when he was here for those 33 years, but it's going to be. That was the promise to Mary in Luke 1, 32 and 33. Your son shall be great, and he sh shall be called the son of the highest. And he shall sit upon the throne of his father David in Jerusalem, and he shall rule over the house of Jacob, that's Israel, the Jews, forever and forever. And that's when he returns as the King of kings and Lord of lords of Revelation chapter 19, verse 16. He's God. Now listen to this. After he said, unto us a child is born, virgin birth, and the son is given, he says, and here is his name. Wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting one, and the prince of peace. You can't miss it, can you? Now he came for one reason. The father sent the son to be the savior of the world. 1 John 4.14. Do you know what? In the Old Testament, we find Christ being crucified in Psalm 22, 16. They pierced my hands and feet, and that was written hundreds of years before there was ever a crucifixion by the Romans in the New Testament. They crucified Jesus, New Testament fulfillment, Matthew 27, verse 35. He died for sinners, Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our eternal peace was upon him, and with his stripes we're healed as the precious blood flowed. New Testament unto Christ who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. The rapture takes place in Revelation 4.1. Come up hither. We sweep through the heavenlies in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15.52. And now we're there on the other side. We've just met Jesus, chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. And the saints who were raptured are singing, chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. Thou art worthy, Christ, to receive the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, by thy blood, out of every kindred, every tongue, every people, every nation. And we're going to reign with you on the earth in the future. He died for sinners. But in the Old Testament, he rose again. What? Psalm 1610, Christ speaks prophetically. Thou wilt not leave thy Holy One to see corruption in the grave, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. No, no. And Job praises this Redeemer. Job? Old Testament? Yeah. Chapter 19, verses 25 and 26. I know that my Redeemer Christ lives, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth, and know after my skin worms destroy my body in my flesh. Hallelujah! I'm going to see my God, Jesus, my Redeemer. One more thing. He's coming back as the King. Psalm 2, verse 6. Yahweh God says, I'll set my king upon the holy hill of Jerusalem. The Redeemer, Christ, shall come to Jerusalem. Isaiah 59, verse 20. And that's when he comes, as I said earlier, on that white horse in Revelation 19, verse 16, as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he's going to reign forever and forever and forever. Revelation 11, 15. That's the true Jesus of Christmas. Jack, that really blessed my heart. Oh, thank you. Wonderful to hear about the past of the Lord, the present, 
and that he is coming again. And uh, I would like to sing a song for you that includes all of those thoughts in this song. And I must say thank you to Canterbury Village for opening their doors to me once again when we took our crew there to do this very, very special song for you. In fact, Jack, you wanted me to do this song. Amen. <laughs> Has anyone told you that God loves you? Enjoy going there so very much again in Canterbury Village. Thank you for opening your doors to us. And we should be uh, actually spreading the word about our wonderful Lord and Savior, His past, His present, and His future coming again. You know, Jack, you've explained that so beautifully to us today, how God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. He gave his son. You explained it so well today. Oh, and every one of you can become a son or daughter of God's by receiving Christ. John 1, 12, as many as received Jesus. To them that received Jesus gave God the Father power to become sons and daughters. That's why Galatians 3, 26 says, you're all the children of God, wait a minute, by faith in Christ Jesus. He's not the father of all. He's only the father of those who receive Jesus in the heart. Each December, millions of people around the world celebrate Christmas. I wonder if we could emphasize once again who Jesus really is. They go and buy a gift and they give a gift, but they forget that the greatest gift of all was given to us from God the Father. He gave his only begotten Son. How wonderful. We need to be talking more about that, don't we? Jesus came for you. 
He came for me. And I trust that in celebrating Christmas, it's reminded you of how grateful we should be. Have you opened your heart to him? Is he in your heart? Is he your savior? I trust that as Jack gives the invitation right now, you will open your heart to the Lord. Jack, would you pray that prayer? I'm taking this slowly. I said he had to take a body with blood. And what is the benefit of that blood? The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth from all sin. I don't care what you've done, how often you've done it, how hideous, how heinous, how terrible you think it is. You can go home or live tomorrow morning with a new, clean, fresh life. For when you receive Jesus, he not only forgives your sin, but he forgets you ever committed it. What? Hebrews 8.12. Look it up. You want to go be clean right this moment? It's Jesus. Pray this after me. Precious Jesus. Oh, I was touched as I heard that message about your shedding of blood. And it was for me. If only one person had been in the world, you would have come. But you came for all of us, and especially for me, Jesus. Thank you for that precious, holy, shed blood to cleanse me, save me forever. Now I receive what you did for me. And Jesus, on this Christmas program, I'm asking you to come into my heart. I want the true Christ of Christmas, not through works or something else. You, Jesus. Come into my heart. Save me now. Amen. Amen. Oh, what a wonderful time to open your heart to the Lord. And if you prayed that prayer, there's my address. Will you write to me, please? I'd love to send you this little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. You know, you can have a wonderful life when you know the Christ of Christmas. I trust that you prayed, opened your heart to him, and allowed him to wash away your sins and be your savior. So please write to me. And now I just want you to know that everything we've been talking about today, as I said before, is here in our wonderful offer of the week, the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. And here is our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Don't put it off. Christmas is around the corner. Chuck. Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order your Jack Fenopee Prophecy Bible. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free, 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Fenopee Ministries, Box 704, Troy, Michigan 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Van Appy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so much, Chuck. And don't put it off. Make the call or write right away. One of the greatest gifts that you could give at any time of the year. I just want to say, friends, that when you're giving out your gifts this Christmas, remember this. The greatest gift of all was laid in a manger. We look forward to being in your home again next week and until then. Remember, God cares for you and so do we so very, very much. Bye-bye.